right, what is up guys? So, I'm here again, and it's time for another AoE 2 balance update video. Yeah! So, patch is going to be December of 2019. Um, as of me recording this, the patch has not gone live yet. Um, but I do know all the changes, and I'll post this as soon as it goes live. Um, so, let's... Uh, Get into it. I'll go through the changes and, of course, give my analysis for what it's worth on all of them and talk about how it will impact the meta and stuff. So, uh, yeah, let me go over to DE. All right, so uh, getting right into this, balance change number one is a little quality of life thing. Uh, they're going to fix the line of sight on all of the herdables, which I have here. Um, so it's going to be two for... Um, all of the 100 food herdables. So that is going to be what the sheep is right now and what you are used to. So I guess um, looks like the turkey's a little bit bigger. I should probably have grid bot on, but oh well. Uh, but that's definitely a little bit of a nerf to the goat and goose. And it's going to be three for the 150 food herdables, which are uh, these guys. So that should be three line of sight, so that should all be like the water buffalo, so it's a little buff to uh, our bovine friends, the cows. So, little change, but, you know, I like the consistency. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff, the stuff you guys are definitely looking for. So, uh, more general changes, but this is to the Stepped Lancer, everyone's favorite unit to hate. So, this, these guys are getting hit with the nerf bat hard. So, their cost is being increased from 70 food, 30 gold to 70 food and 45 gold. So, that is a 50% gold increase to the unit. But wait, there's more. Their attack is going to be decreased by 2. You can see that it's uh, 10 attack in the Castle Age and 12 attack in the Imperial Age. And both are being reduced by 2, so it's going to be 8 attack in the Castle Age and 10 attack in the Imperial Age, so there's the damage nerf. But wait, there's more. Their reload time is going to be uh, increased, I guess. The, the fire rate's slower. Uh, that, that's the important thing. So it, right now it's at 1.9, which is the same attack speed as a Hussar or a Paladin. Uh, of course, the game doesn't list those right now because that would be too easy. But yeah. Uh, so right now it's a pretty fast attack speed. The default attack rate guys in the game is 2. That's the attack rate of, uh, you know, the archer line, the cav archer line, the swordsman line, um, scout cav, light cav, camels. You know, most units, like, a plurality of units have an attack speed of 2 for reference. So normally they're a little bit faster. Uh, the step plans are used to be a little bit faster. Now it's going to be reduced, guys, to 2.3. That is really, really slow, guys. That is a slow attack speed. I, I don't think there's anything in the game that has a 2.3 reload time right now. But for reference, war wagons and uh, elephant archers and I think ballista elephants too have a reload time of 2.5. So it's a little bit faster than, say, a war wagon for reference. But it's obviously a lot slower than what it is now. But guys, wait, there's more. The Step Lancer's uh, collision modifier increased from 0.5 to 1. Now, what the hell does that mean? So it makes the unit harder to stack, uh, importantly. So the, you can't bunch the units up as easily. So, you know, all those uh, clips and videos you've seen of, you know, 5,000 Step Lancers piled on top of each other, all attacking simultaneously, uh, that's going to be a little bit harder to do now. Uh, so that is another nerf. But wait, guys, there's one more. And their speed is being reduced from 1.5 down to 1.45. So Step Lancers, uh, Kumans aside, but we'll get to them, uh, have a very, very fast movement speed. One of the fastest in the game. It's the same as Light Cav and Hussar. So yeah, now that is getting bumped down just a little bit to the uh, movement speed of Cav Archers and like all that stuff. So yeah, that's the Step Lancer changes. Whew, what to make of this? So, these guys are getting hit uh, pretty hard with the nerf bat. Will they still see play? I would have to imagine so. I mean, that stacking ability is just really, really insane. But, I mean, obviously you can't do it as well, and the unit is <laughs> slower, more expensive, and weaker. I mean, that's a lot of nerfs to throw at a unit. I feel like in most situations, you'll just go back to using the, the standard night line with uh, Kumans and Tartars. 
but who knows? The unit uh, unit will probably still find a way to see play. I, I would imagine it can still you can still find a way to make it work. Okay, moving on. So I am a man of the people and also a man of reading the patch notes in the order in which they are written, because yeah. So we're going to Cummins now and. Just like the Reddit and AoE Zone and everywhere else in the universe memes indicate, Koomans are way overpowered, so they're getting hit with the nerf bat. So uh, additional Town Center can be built in the Feudal Age. They will still be able to do that, but it's going to be, to be built even slower. Uh, normally, the Kuman TC takes 225 seconds to be built in the Feudal Age. Um, normally, TC takes uh, 150 seconds. So Koomans takes 75 seconds longer right now to build a TC in the Feudal Age, making it slightly longer than a castle. Castle's 200 seconds. With All of this is with one villager, guys. So now it's going to be taking 270 seconds to build a TC in the Feudal Age with one villager as Cummins. Obviously, you're using more than one villager to build a town center, but this is getting... Uh, it, it, it's going to take a lot longer, and it's going to slow down their uh, their rapid economic expansion. So, Kumans, they're still going to have one of the strongest economies in the game. It still might be overpowered, but at least it's being tuned down and you know pushed back just a little bit. Uh, Kipchak is going to be the next victim of the nerf hammer. And here we are. So, Kipchak, reload time increased from 1.8 to 2.2. So, again, Kipchaks are crazy strong, man. And they had a very, very fast reload speed. Uh, as I was talking about with the Step Lancer, 1.8 is very, very fast. Um, what has a reload speed of 1.8? Oh, yeah, the Night Line. So, yeah, they used to attack as fast as the Night Line. And now that is, and I'm sure that was further improved by Thumbring. I don't have the uh, the hard numbers on that, though. But now it's being reduced to 2.2. So that's a little bit slower than a Tarkin. A little bit faster than the new Step Lancer, but a little bit slower than a Tarkin. So the actual raw DPS of this unit is being dropped quite a bit. I mean, that's, what, 0.4 seconds longer between each uh, attack? That's pretty big. So the Kipchak's HP is also being reduced. It's going to go from 45... 50, Castle Age, Imperial Age, to 40, 45. So it's going to be minus 5 HP per age. And that is, that's another, that's another nerf to you. It's another one to, to pile on. Uh, Kipchaks, especially because you get all of the armor uh, upgrades and Parthian tactics as Cummins. Uh So you get Parthian tactics as well as, where the heck did they put the blacksmith upgrades now, man? So everything's rearranged. Uh, so yeah, you have all of the defense upgrades, so they could have six pierce armor normally. So they were surprisingly tanky for a unit that's so cheap. Uh, now they're being, you know, it's it's being nerfed a little bit. I mean, they, I think this is the lowest HP of any mounted unit in the game, other than like a missionary or something. But yeah, so that's, you know, it's another one to pile on. And the Kipchak's total amount of arrows is being reduced from four to three. Um, I'm pretty sure the additional arrows deal three damage. So, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's another nerf. Of course, there's so much pierce armor for most units, you know, with any amount of blacksmith upgrades that the extra arrows were likely dealing one damage anyway. But this will be, I think, especially a big nerf against rams. It's going to make the Kipchak worse against rams because, you know, it's just one less arrow. Um, mangonels and anything, really. Uh, that has, like, you know, high pierce armor and they were dealing one damage to anyway. I mean, that's like, uh, what, 25% decrease? That's how math works. Um, so yeah, the, the, the Kipchak's getting hit pretty hard. I still think it will be a good unit. I mean, it's it's really cheap. 60 wood, 35 gold is not an expensive, unique unit. And their elite upgrade, does it even say here? Yeah, it does. So it's one, uh, 1,100 food, 1,000 wood. The fact that the elite upgrade doesn't cost gold is really nice. It's still going to see play. It's still going to be a good unit, but it will be a little bit weaker for sure. And finally for Cummins, we will have their uh, speed bonus being addressed. And that is currently they have cavalry plus 10% movement speed starting in the feudal age. And they have husbandry. So yeah, they can have, they essentially get husbandry for free starting in the feudal age. 
And then they also get husbandry in the Castle Age. So that's why you see Kumin cavalry just zooming around everywhere like freaking Cobra cars. Uh, and that's getting, be, going to be getting addressed. So, I mean, these two changes are kind of uh, in tandem. One, Kumins lose husbandry, so they no longer get the additional benefit of husbandry. And their speed bonus is now being staggered. So it's going to be 5% faster in the Feudal Age, so it's just going to be a little bit of an increase to their Scout Rush. Um, it's going to be 10% in Castle Age, so it's essentially the equivalent of them getting husbandry for free. Uh, and in the Imperial Age, it will be plus 15%. So they'll end up, compared to civilizations with husbandry, with 5% faster moving cavalry in the Imperial Age. That, guys, is the equivalent to, say, Celts who have one of the other very few movement speed boosts. So they have infantry that move 15% faster, but they don't have squires. So it's going to be kind of the same deal with Cumans. Like, if you think about Celt halberdiers and champions compared to normal, you know, halberdiers and champions, how much, how relatively faster they are, it's going to be the same deal with Cumans compared to other cavalry units. Um, and those are all the changes to Cumans. Uh, oh boy, yeah, th these guys are definitely getting nerfed hard. And they needed it. Oh, man, they needed it. I still think they're going to be a very, very strong civilization. The TC bonus is just so fundamentally broken. And their tech tree is still so, so, so sick. I mean, step husbandry, uh, it's, I think it's like, what, a 400% faster increased or something? Like, this is misleading. I don't know, there's some fancy math voodoo, but like the light cav and cav archers train almost instantly and they're fully upgraded hussars. Yeah, the cav archers miss bracer, but when you're churning them out, you know, instantly, who cares? I mean, they still have freaking champions, halbs fully upgraded, they have siege onager, siege ram. Uh, yeah, this, this civ just has so much going for it still. It's still going to be really good, but is it going to be an insta-pick on every single land map? No, it will not. It will still be just one of those very powerful civs. All right, so moving on to the Bulgarians. Uh, we're back in the scenario editor as the very happy Bulgarian music just now ends. And I thought, you know, visual demonstration might be nice here. So this is, uh, it's an interesting change, but I'm kind of glad they're doing it. So they're having the Krepos, which is seen here alongside a castle. Um, the size of the building is being decreased. So it's right now it's a four by four building, same as a castle. Uh, it's gonna be de decreased to a three by three building. So, for comparison, I have a TC and a barracks. A uh, TC is also 4x4 like a castle and a crepos currently, and a barracks is a 3x3 building like, uh, you know, the crepost will be. So, it's going to be a much smaller building. It's going to be easier to stack them, to be honest. Um, but honestly, I think this is more of a, like, a quality of life change, at least it was intended to be such, because the crepost is, like, visually looking at it, it it's not... I would say quite as impressive looking as a castle. Like it doesn't look as strong as a castle, but it looks almost as strong as a castle. It's even t taller, I think. At least it looks taller. Um, so I think that's going to be better representative of the fact that the Crepost is essentially a weaker castle um, with less uh, bells and whistles, like being able to upgrade stuff. <laughs> um, so that's a, that's a pretty interesting change. All right, moving back to the tech tree with the Bulgarians. Um, they are getting some nerfs and buffs. So first up on the chopping block is the Conic. So Conics, guys, they're legit one of the single best units in the game. And it's only because Kubans are an even more overpowered Civ that you're not just, you know, completely being drowned to death by Conics every single game and every single map. They were just, they're just insane at everything. They, with uh, the stirrups tech, that make Light Cav and Conic's attack 25% faster, they were attacking about as fast as Japanese Samurai. And then they have all the other things Conic's have going for them, what with the uh, being better against pikemen uh, because of the dismount mechanic and all that stuff. So what's happening to the Conic? Their HP is being reduced from 110, 130, so 110 Castle Age, 130 Imperial Age, to 100 and 120. So right now they have essentially just plus 10 HP on the night line. So 110 HP right now for Konics, and that's 100 for Knights, and then 120 HP for Cavaliers, 130 HP for Elite Konics. Now essentially the Konics are being bought, uh, brought back in line with the Knight line. So a little bit of an HP nerf there. I mean, the unit really has no business being just like 
a straight up upgrade on the the nightline anyway. And I have to say that Bulgarians possessing Paladin is like it's the least impressive fully upgraded Paladin Civ in the game in terms of like actually ever making their Paladins. Just because you just make Konex in every situation. They're not that hard to field because of the crep post. And uh, yeah. So their reload time getting uh, nerfed from 1.9 as it is right now. Same attack speed as a Paladin, as I've mentioned before. Now it's all the way down to 2.4. Oh man, that is a that is a hefty nerf. Uh, with stirrups, it's going to, I think, go back up to 1.9. That's, I think, how math works. I, I I very well could be wrong. Okay, so after some brief calculator magic, um, the uh, the Konix with stirrups um, from their uh, their new reload time nerf, uh, they're going to be attacking at 1.8 as opposed to uh, whatever madness it was before. So all in all, your fully upgraded conics are going to be attacking at the same rate as the night line. So it's now instead of stirrups honestly being like a buff to the conic, it's like you need to get stirrups for them to attack as fast as a generic cavalry unit. And this applies, guys, to both the mounted and dismounted versions of the unit, in case you're wondering. Um, so yeah, conics getting nerfed hard, but it needed to because it's absolutely silly strong. But Bulgarians are getting a buff. To compensate. In my opinion, Bulgarians really suffered from the Konic being so incredibly strong. I mean, just in general, their gameplay of men at arms with the free men at arm upgrade into crep posts and Konic spam, like that was way too strong, but everything else about the Civ was really way too underwhelming. So the uh the Baggins tech, militia line gains plus three armor, that is now getting buffed up to plus five armor. Um, so Bilbo Baggins strikes again, and you're getting, uh, not quite mini Teutonic Knights with your two-handed swordsman, but they are going to be a bit better, um, because Bulgarians obviously lack the champion upgrade, uh, and champions do have one melee armor. Really, the, uh, the Baggins tech was only giving their two-handed swordsman plus two melee armor on, you know, a generic champion, which is really not enough to compensate for not having champion, like missing the extra HP and attack. So now it's going to be plus five armor, meaning the two-handed swordsman will be ending with eight melee armor, which is pretty dang good. Uh, it's going to make them a lot stronger against, say, Hussars, which have a fairly low attack. They're going to have, uh, what, 11 attack? It fully upgraded, so they'll only be dealing three damage per hit to the, uh, the Bulgarian swordsman line. Yeah, I, I can work with that. I can work with that. Um, Halbs as well, Hal only having ten base attack fully upgraded against eight melee armor. They're only dealing two damage a hit. I mean, swordsmen are are already strong against halberdiers, but now now they're going to be really good, um, and it's, it probably will help a little bit versus like uh, paladins and stuff. So yeah, those are all of the changes to Bulgarians. I honestly think the Civ might need more um, because if the Men at Arm into Crepost Conic Spam is not super good, then I'm not really sure what the point of playing the Civ is. Um, I think they need a little bit more to distinguish themselves. Um, I'd like to see some other changes here and there, but I have lots of ideas. That's for another video. Moving right along to Lithuanians. So... All four of the new civs did get changed. Lithuanians, they got some mild nerfs, um, but definitely noticeable still. So the uh, the point of nerfing, uh, well, two actually, but the first one is that each garrison relic gives plus one attack to cavalry units for a maximum of plus five. That is now being brought down to a maximum of plus four. Um, so that uh, that's definitely a little bit of a nerf. You might be thinking, okay, plus five attack, plus four attack, you're still getting super strong paladins and whatnot. How is this that much of a difference? Well, it is a little bit of a breaking point um, because right now, if you have five relics as Lithuanians, uh, your paladins three hit <laughs> halberdiers as opposed to four hitting halberdiers. Uh, you know, it's just that, uh, that exact break point in damage. So now they're gonna be killing halberdiers in one more hit. Um, which is definitely, I think, uh, a good thing. Is it still a really strong bonus? Yes. Is it still a poorly designed bonus? Yes, I could go on and on about the design of many of these civs, but uh, 
Again, that's for another rambling video. Um, so also that bonus will no longer be affecting the scout line. It will only be affecting your paladins and your lovely, lovely ladies, latest. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's going to be another nerf that makes them worse in a trash situation where they already have very good trash from this bonus. So that's going to be nice. Um, also, their bonus where they start with plus 150 food is being brought down to just plus 100 food. You might be thinking, well, Ornlu, wasn't this bonus just a straight-up upgrade in most situations of the Persian bonus of extra starting resources? And I would say, yes, lovely viewer, it is. It was a terribly designed bonus. It was a really boring bonus. And yes, it was also way too strong. Now it's just going to be plus 100 food, which makes it uh, more or less like exactly the same as the Persian bonus. But instead of 50 wood, you have 100 more food. Hooray! I really wish they'd give you something a little more interesting. But nonetheless, that is going to be the nerfs to Lithuanians. A sieve that, kind of like Bulgarians, would likely be oppressing all of you guys in your rated games had Cumans not existed. Going now to Mayans, the sieve that thought it could never be touched because it didn't get nerfed when Nii came out, even though they were obviously one of the strongest sieves. They're getting nerfed, and a little bit of, uh, of a humble brag here. Not even a humble brag, a full ego brag. They, uh, I, I suggested this change directly to the devs, and uh, they, they went for it. Plumed archers, plus five wood and gold cost. So now they, you know, instead of costing 50 wood and 50 gold, they cost 55 wood and 55 gold. Um, I mean, I won't say I'm the only person who's ever suggested that change. I'm sure many people have, but uh, I'm still going to I'm still going to pat myself on the back for uh, for getting this change in there. Um, in my opinion, the pro all problems with Mayans stem from the plumed archer being way too damn cheap. Uh, it's too strong in the castle age. It's too easy to make these guys and then not have to worry about anything else. Uh, and that's exactly where the unit is being addressed. It is now going to be harder to make the unit in castle age uh, when you are still trying to get your economy up and rolling. It's not really going to matter in imperial age because the Mayan army is still cheap in general, but the plumed archer is essentially an infantry, I mean like a, a, a non-mounted cav archer. It has, like, all the benefits of a cav archer without being weak to, like, halberdiers and stuff. Uh, and that, that was just a, a way too strong, in my opinion. Makes Making slinging in the Mayans is still going to be really strong. Mayans, in general, are still going to be really strong. But this is going to make them, I think, a little bit less oppressive, especially in the mid-game, where they, uh, they can certainly just snowball out of control with the power of plumed archers. Next up on the chopping block will be Saracens, another sieve that would all be oppressing you guys had Cumans not existed. Um, their archer bonus is now being staggered to plus one per age. So it's now going to be plus one in feudal age, plus two in castle age, and plus three in imperial age. Why do they keep on trying to make this bonus a thing? It will never be balanced. It will either be, you know, terrible or super overpowered. Blah. I mean, right now, like, uh, Saracen archers can just, like, destroy buildings in Feudal Age. I mean, by comparison, um, Obsidian Arrows is plus six versus buildings. Oops. Isn't this plus two attack versus buildings? I'm pretty sure it's, like, plus five in total. I'm pretty sure this is, like, wrong or something? I seem to remember this being plus two. I don't know. Even if it is plus four, you're still getting two thirds of or yeah, two thirds of obsidian arrows for free from the feudal age, and that that's just way too strong. However, Saracens as a civilization are going to be like back to being terrible. They went from their brief moment in the limelight in S tier on my Arabia tier list back to likely being delegated to C tier or something. Um, I would love to see a bonus where that actually you know buffs their camels in some way. Um, my personal favorite being plus 10 HP to camels and then making zealotry plus 20. Um, so it's like they end up with 170 HP still, but ha they get plus 10 extra HP in castle age. I think that would be a nice little change for them. But again, not the purpose of this video. Sorry for the, uh, the suggestion rambling. And finally, guys, last but not least, we have the Tartars. They are getting... 
not so much a nerf as a redesign. Um, not completely, mostly, and entirely focused at the Keshik unit. And again, I'm going to take a little bit of credit for these changes, um, because it's something that I have written about at length to them. Uh, I think I even made a post on the official forums. I stooped so low uh, way back in beta. Um, I think the Keshik is a really boring unit right now. Uh, it just gives you a little bit of a gold discount, but like, it's a very expensive unit in the gold cost. It's 80 gold. So, like, the fact that it generates gold is really, it's just like, okay, you're getting a, a bit of a discount on the, the unit in most situations. So, in my opinion, oh yeah, also the, the Keshik is essentially a, a stand-in for Paladins. Like, yeah, it's a little bit weaker than a Paladin in terms of HP and melee armor, but it's more or less like a Paladin for a Civ that shouldn't really have a Paladin-like unit. Um, so, in my opinion... This unit should have and is being redesigned as a medium cavalry unit, much like the uh, Tarkin for Huns, where it's going to be not as strong, but it is going to be a lot cheaper, and I think it will better fulfill that role of raiding. So, what changes are being made? Cost is reduced from 50 food, 80 gold, to 50 food, 40 gold. That's right, the gold cost of this unit was slashed in half. Next, the HP is being increased by 10, so it's going to be from 100 to 110, and 130 to 140. That will mean they will have 130 HP in the Feudal Age, something that only, or Feudal Age, Castle Age, um, something right now only the Konic can, you know, boast of, uh, and of course that's getting nerfed. So yes, for like a normal cavalry unit, it's going to have really good HP in the Castle Age, and in Imperial Age, it's going to end up with 160 HP, which is uh, 10 less than a Tarkin, uh, 20 less than a Paladin with Bloodlines, same as a Paladin without Bloodlines. But it's still going to be a you know nice tanky unit, um, especially with that three pierce armor, super nice. Of course, um, with all of these buffs must come an attack nerf, otherwise the unit would be way overpowered. And its attack goes from 12 to 14, or 12 and 14, uh, down to 9 and 11. So 9 attack in the Castle Age, 11 attack in the Imperial Age, and this sort of cements it as more of a medium cavalry unit. It's not a stand-in for Paladin or Cavalier in the case of Tartars. And it's going to be much more designed around that raiding aspect, anti-archer aspect, kind of like the Tarkin. And honestly, this unit is pretty similar to the Tarkin. Um, it's going to be a little bit better in the Castle Age, I think, like, for sure. It's totally better in the Castle Age. Um, Imperial Age, they don't have the same Pierce armor. Uh, they have one less Pierce armor than Tarkins. But uh, to compensate, uh, they have, I think, a, still a faster attack speed. Um, and they have the gold generation uh, opportunity, uh, which, you know, you want from a raiding unit. Uh, you want to be, you know, running around killing villagers, or if you're in, like, little skirmishes, uh, to be getting some some value there, getting some of that juicy, juicy value. Uh, so I, I am a big fan of this redesign. Um, like, I didn't, I, I can't say that I suggested those exact specific changes, but I think the whole conceptual thing, uh, it's definitely something I've been a big fan of for a while. And uh, that's all Tartars are being changed. I think they are the best designed of the new civs. So that is it, guys. Those are all of the changes coming in this December 2019 patch. Um, I'll be posting this when the, you know, the, the, the patch goes live sometime this week. And uh, I guess just for some closing thoughts, the big losers in this patch are three of the four new civs. Uh, Kumin's number one, Lithuanian's two... Uh, Bulgarians 3. So in addition to the three new civs, Mayans will receive a little bit of a nerf. They're still going to be perfectly strong and powerful, don't worry about that. But they're definitely going to be a little bit weaker. Uh, and Saracens are probably going to be uh, thrown back into the trash bin of civilizations, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, they're probably not going to be all that impressive now, so which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, but they are too strong now, they're probably going to be too weak, and uh, we want to find somewhere in the middle, I think. But I think most importantly, Kumins and Staff Lancers are getting nerfed. Those were by far the most oppressive things in the game. With those being toned down a little bit, some of the other problematic aspects of the new civs being toned down, this, um, I, uh, I'm liking the direction, balance-wise, of, of this patch. I agree with most of the changes. 
and uh, that that's usually a good sign, at least at least in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be it, guys. Uh, do leave a like if you enjoyed, and follow, and whatever you do on YouTube, and yeah, see you guys next time. <laughs> Perfect outro.